We have a brand new game. I was trying to contain myself. Oh my. <laughs> Go option one, not safe. <laughs> These Damn. are insane. And Brandon keep killing it. Yo, yo, yo. What is good, Creative Fam? Uh, this is totally different. We have not done a night stream um in quite a while and with all the crazy news coming from black magic we had to do it we had no choice we had no choice we had to do this last minute deal as a lot of you guys know i'm actually going to be headed off to nab mm, tomorrow actually dang it's crazy it's coming up that fast i'm headed to nab tomorrow and before NAB even kicked off, Lord have mercy, have the companies decided to go insane. Like we've had so much stuff announced with the biggest stuff being announced seemingly from Black Magic. And that's exactly why I wanted to have this stream tonight. But more importantly, um, I knew one person, one person immediately came to my mind once all this stuff popped off that I was like, he is going to lose his mind about this and that was michael tobin but i also knew that he was going to be busy working on a video so like i wasn't like hey let's hop on a call right now i was like i'm gonna give him a, like a few hours because i know he's working on a youtube video and sure enough if you guys haven't already seen it over on his channel yeah he already dropped a 20 plus minute video where there were a lot of creators already dropping like short reaction type videos he went in depth for 20 minutes talking about this topic but i was like heck let's just get you on the show and let's just talk about this so to the stage michael what it do bro <laughs> how's it going man from yeah. one video to another <laughs> i feel like we were just talking about this a few weeks ago on my uh on my stream how we wanted this box style camera from black magic and seemingly they listened to what we were asking for it's true. I mean, I feel like I, I spent all January checking out uh, like mod. That's right. It was the last time we, I was on here was we were talking about the mod camera yes. and a couple different projects. And then I think a couple weeks ago, I made like a rumor video and I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to give up on the whole box camera idea. And I'm just I think there's going to be like a new Ursa Mini Pro. So we got that today and then it just kept going. Yeah, dude, I I was so, so what's interesting was this morning. We went live like we normally do on Fridays, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. I was hanging out with Brady Bissett, and we are just talking about lighting and what we're excited about with NAB. And then literally I get 
off the live stream and then my phone just proceeds to explode with like and everyone's saying different stuff and it's all black magic but someone's like yo did you see the new ursa yo box camera yo da vinci 19 and i'm just like whoa 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 you all are talking about different stuff but yet everyone's talking about black magic and sure enough yeah everybody went nuts and that's what we got today yeah i mean literally from the broadcast i mean the first 20 or 30 minutes was just broadcast stuff and they announced like 10 new products there and i'm not an expert in that realm so like uh but switchers and everything else and then yeah as soon as they got to davinci resolve 19 then they had physical hardware products after that for resolve and then they got into cameras and it was like i was in a couple chats and we were just like all right so this they're gonna end on this nope oh gonna end on this nope <laughs> Well, look, I feel like we're not the only ones excited about this. There are tons of people in the chat right now. Sound off in the chat. Let us know how you guys feel. At the beginning of this show, I asked you guys at a poll. It's currently running in the chat right now. And basically, I asked, is the Black Magic Pixis camera? I'm super dyslexic. So these letters are going to throw me off. I can tell you right now. A Y, what is it? A Y, an X, and an I should not be next to each other in any word whatsoever as a dyslexic person. But I will say, I asked, is the Black Magic Pixis the new king of cinema cameras? And right now, there is a narrow lead saying yes, but it is 51% to 49%. So people do seem to be a little split in the chat right now as far as like, is this the new king of cameras? But it looks like a couple people are excited. Jonathan says they did it. They absolutely <laughs> did it. <laughs> like the camera is here. I can't believe they did it either. Uh, ben Four says wasn't expecting this at all. Now, Tobin, I know you have worked with Black Magic in some sense in the past, and you obviously cover them a lot more. But was this something that like you ever thought would actually turn up, or was it just like a I uh, just kind of going to give up. I know you said you kind of gave up on like the projects and stuff, but did you think like maybe at some point they'll listen or did you think they were going to totally different direction? Uh, up until very recently, I had full hope that they would kind of get on board with the whole idea at some point. And then literally up until today, I was like, you know, the Ursa minis haven't been updated in a long time. So they're probably just going to go like a FX six route kind of, like a smaller but still just beefed up like Ursa Mini Pro. And then we'll just continue to get this weird, you know, giant pocket, not pocket shaped camera for a while because Grant just seems to love that shape. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, as soon as he, you know, pulled that thing onto the table, I was like, okay, I mean, it's rectangular more than a box. You know, it's not a perfect box, but it's box. Hey, I think that's hey, that's about as close as a box that we can really ask yeah. for Black Magic. Like, let's be honest. We didn't even think we were going to get that close. And it's actually made out of the same magnesium alloy as the larger Ursa. So, yay, no more plastic bodies, or at least in this lineup. Yeah, well, and that's, that's something that I think is interesting. It's like, this is a completely new lineup. Like, they're not trying to carry on that black magic pocket name anymore which we saw we had an original black magic pocket like the original one the one that actually could fit in your pocket and then they turned the 4k pocket and they kept that name but i but they changed the body type so i think it's really interesting that they were like with well, this one this is not a pocket camera in any way which gives me hope that like some of the issues that we currently see with this camera and we will definitely get into that will get like addressed with future versions of it because i do feel like we'll get some future versions but one thing they did keep and a lot of people are sounding off in the chat about this too is that yo it's only three thousand dollars which is kind of like kind of nuts right like yeah i really thought they were gonna price this one up a bit i when i was watching it before the price i was like all right cool we've they finally entered that like 4500 maybe you know five thousand right at that price point mark and in typical black magic fashion they're just like oh no super inexpensive you know all things considered like yeah okay cool yeah i think it's really interesting i mean uh rj says here he says i need three thousand dollars anybody want to sponsor me um but just like call up justin and cam mackey from the last one they'll just start <laughs> 
sending in yeah, donations. Where, yeah. where are those just... super chats at? Where are those super <laughs> chats from, from Cam and uh, Justin? So right now, it looks like we're up to 50 votes on the stream. And is this the new king of cinema cameras? And it's a dead heat, 50-50. It's 50-50 right now. But um, what's crazy is that at $3,000, I feel like if you are a professional, this is not a steep investment. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like at $3,000 for everything that you're getting out of this camera, which we're absolutely going to jump into the specs of this and kind of talk through some of them, because honestly, there are a lot of specs in here that make me really excited. But then there's some specs in here that like as a black metric shooter yourself, I love to kind of get your take on these because some of them just don't make a lot of sense to me. And it's been a while since I shot on black magic. So like some of the stuff feels like, yeah, this is great, but it's still $3,000. And I'm a little nervous of what I'm actually getting for that price point. Sure. Yeah. So um, I want to go through the chat really, really quick just to see who else is excited about this. Uh, we do we do want to open this up at some point to bring some people onto the stream to give your opinion. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the chat. We'll definitely bring that up. But somebody actually has already commented one of the things that I am the most nervous about with this camera. And it comes from Daniel. And he says, the dynamic range sucks. Look, I'm going to be honest. I saw that. And as a, obviously, I'm you know, I shoot a lot of stuff on red. 13 stops, yo. 13 stops. That was the one moment that I was like, I was all like this and then just like, because it is the same six. I mean, we're basically getting the 6K full frame in a box body. See, that's and what so it I, has all the same I don't specs. have enough experience with that one. But when I saw like the specs and I saw the the frame rates and everything, it felt like they just ported one camera into a body that they thought everybody wanted, but then like full transparency, that screen is like borderline unusable, I think for a lot of people. And so like, I kind of would love to know, like what's your take on that porting of that body or that camera into a new body, but possibly just kind of changing it up for people. But again, it's still only three grand, right? So we should, we should be happy, right? <laughs> Well, it's it's definitely one of those things that I'm sure someone can send me my words back to me where I probably said in the past six months, like, just put the same specs in the different body. And and since that's essentially what they did, uh, yes, to some extent, I can't complain. Um, uh, but definitely when I reviewed the 6K full frame a couple months ago, I was like, ooh, frame rates kind of like. Not, it's even worse than the 6K Pro, you know, 1080, 120, like in 2024 is a bit rough. The 13 stops the dynamic range, which we all know is really like 11 and a half usable or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and and no internal ND, which the, my 6K Pro has as well. Those are kind of definitely three like, Ugh. but like you said, I have to view this as it's we're jumping back to like a first gen product of a new line yes it's porting over from the pocket line but hopefully uh you know this is the start of something new and beautiful and if you want those things hopefully they can solve them in gen 2 and 3 and um uh i know other cameras i mean red correct me if i'm wrong uh do any of them come with internal nds i know a lot of companies have made solutions for mounts like electronic NDs that go in front of the mount in between the lens. So we'll probably have to see accessories like that. And everyone loves black magic. So I'm sure Tilta and all those big accessory yeah. companies are going to hop on this thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I can say like, as far as like red right now, the only one that has built in NDs are, is going to be the XL. Uh, the rest of them, they do have their PL adapter that has electronic NDs in that. So that, and that is native to the software. So if you go with reds, you can actually control it from the camera itself, just like you would with any other camera that has it built in. But you're right. That is an additional expense. And I feel like built in ND is one of those things that even when black magic put it in the 6k pro, right? That's the one that it was in. Um, I even thought at that point, like, wow, I can't believe they actually, gave built-in NDs on a camera like this because the only other camera that I knew of at the time that had it would have been the Sony FX6, which that's a six grand camera. 
and the Canon C70, which is also another six grand camera. And so the fact that we even had that in a black magic camera at that price point was super, super, uh, was super awesome. You know, like it even came in at that price point. And I think that's the thing that when we look at this camera, it's so, it's so weird because there are things that are currently missing and we're judging it on the landscape of cameras today, but that price point doesn't put it in the landscape of cameras today. It, and they're usually good at that. It's usually one of those things where whether you're debating someone else or for your own personal self, anytime you go, ah, you kind of just go, ah, but it's three grand. And at the end of my video, I kind of addressed that where I, when I was recording, there's a, there's a jump cut, but there's about two minutes where I kind of pause. Cause at first I say like, and now I'm going to tell you the thing that infuriates me the most or, or that I'm most concerned about. And it was the screen on the side. Cause I saw it whole, cut. I saw it cut and I was like, <laughs> and then I was what like, did out? what did he cut oh, out? I was like, I got to breathe. I got to breathe. Cause no, let the people know what really, what really went there. <laughs> cause, cause at first it's like, you know, you hold a camera in some version like this most of the time and you're not going to like stare at the side, which is weird. And but what I go on to say is still the truth of like, well, all right, we're breaking out of that mirrorless camera style. You know, I've been begging or I, I've been hoping for a screen to be able to flip around so I can see it as a content creator on my other pocket cameras. But here it's like you have to completely leave that world and be like, all right, well, box cinema cameras, you usually have to attach a monitor. Something like a Komodo does have a screen on top, but you tell me you you own you own a bunch of them. Uh, a lot of people, I'm guessing, still just put a monitor. It's like there for like yeah. emergencies or like oh I need to check something real quick, but you're not using that as your main monitor. No, it's very it's very uh, fixed to the top of the camera, and it kind of only forces you to operate it in a single way, which is. One of the things that like when I did see that this monitor is fixed to the side, like if it's on sticks, I do find myself like on the side of the camera. So that way I could actually see it and then see my talent at the same time. And I'm not hiding behind camera when you're working with clients. That's been my experience. Um, the Komodo screen on top is incredibly tiny. And this screen, I, I believe it's a six inch or how big is the screen? You know, is it four inches? Uh, yeah, is it five? It but yeah, it's it's a much larger screen for sure compared yeah. to the uh, Komodo screen. And I feel like it's going to be more functional by being able to have it on the side. And quite honestly, like if you have a first AC, they're going to love that this screen is on the side there because that way you can actually pull focus using it and it's going to be very functional. The, the one thing I will say, and I, I do have, I'm going to pull this up for everyone because we did bring up the actual website here so that way we can pull things here but one thing that i did notice is like i love to see how the camera manufacturers themselves expect you to use this camera and you can see here in this configuration that like they have the monitor obviously fixed to the side they have the evf which we'll definitely get into because that thing looks amazing and if it's like the other ones that work on the ursa then it's going to look amazing but you can clearly tell that in this configuration, with the handle on there and the 15 millimeter rods, it wouldn't be too out of the ordinary to stick a monitor on the top of here. I mean, yeah. you have the 15 millimeter rods up there, and so it'd be very easy to attach a monitor here and be able to then see it from the top of the camera and sort of operate it like a Komodo. But it is starting to get a little big, in my opinion. And that's where I, I'm really excited to see how they rig this camera out at NAB. Because a lot of times, like, they're going to have multiple different configurations of this camera on the floor. And so we'll get a chance to kind of see how they're going to set that up. For sure. And, and I do like on the right-hand side how they have it kind of customizable to where you can have, um, I think it either, but the out of the box, it just has, yeah, right there, it has, like, underneath those two optional plates is just like a couple quarter 20s or three eights and then you have like the rosette right there so you can attach a handle and then that strap one is interesting if you record to ssds or you want to attach your phone if you're uploading the camera to cloud and that's the other thing i was going to say about the monitor is being that size with black magic's recent update to their pocket line which this camera will also get for their new menu style and the new gallery view and black magic cloud integration like black magic screens are not only the best designed monitors but 
it they are very responsive just like an iphone or ipad they're not clunky and so when i had to log into my black magic cloud account on my camera like it was fine to like use a full keyboard and mm. so that wouldn't have worked with like you know a little three inch monitor on top or something right um i do wish i feel very greedy asking for anything else after today but like i do wish that through the USB-C, like right now I'm using the new USB-C connection, no HDMI, like just my Pocket 6K Pro straight to the computer. I was hoping, I don't, uh, some software engineer needs to do this where I can just plug in my phone. I don't need that Axoon thing. I know in Atomos, I think you said before our phone call, they yeah. just released something. I don't know. They did. But like, I just want to be able to plug in my phone, no other accessories and just Blackmagic, let me use that as the monitor. They have like they have a cool iPad app. They just got to add live monitoring to it. But again, I'm getting greedy. I'm getting greedy. <laughs> well, you know, I think I think it's okay to keep asking for more because the truth is, is I don't believe if we didn't and like when I say we, I don't mean Brandon and and Michael. I mean like as a community, if we didn't ask for this box shaped Black Magic, I don't know if we necessarily would have ever gotten it because as really? you mentioned before, it seemed like they really were in love with that pocket design. But I actually brought out a good friend of mine named Reese to hang out with us on the live stream because he's a working DP. He shoots a lot of stuff on Alexa's and he shot with me on a lot of projects. And we kind of bounce back and forth between, you know, shooting on Reds, shooting on Alexa's and Black Magics. And as somebody who shoots a lot of features in the industry, I wanted to kind of get his input on this camera just to give another perspective. I mean, obviously, I know that, Tobin, you have your background in Black Magic, and obviously mine's a little bit more in red. But I wanted to get someone who, who's been working a lot in the industry with tons of different cameras. And so I wanted to go ahead and bring up Reese. How's it going, bud? What's going on? I'm doing all right. And literally joining us while shooting on an Ari. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you guys who don't know, Reese is, uh, you think I'm extra when it comes to the gear. Uh, Reese, you want to tell the people what your webcam is right now? It's it's a very affordable. Anyone can get it. It's a Alexa XT Plus. You know, just doing <laughs> Highland out of it into a, playing off a Black Magic recorder over here, which is giving me my uh, webcam feed. Look, look, and y'all say I'm doing too much, uh, but I, I really wanted to kind of get your input on this camera. I know, obviously, when you and I first saw the camera and we started talking about it, you know, there were a lot of people kind of getting excited about it. But as someone who is working in the industry. What do you think about when you see a camera like this and how it could actually work in an on-set experience? Well, I do like the ergonomic of it. Like box cameras are always my thing. The thing with the, like the original pockets, they were too sideways long. So I had problem playing on gimbals and rigging them out. Not enough accessory ports. I do like that they're going more of a box route. So it makes mounting like wireless transmissions on there, maybe adding like ball focus a little bit easier. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but also looking at the media on there, it's a good thing they didn't go with anything too proprietary and uh, something you can easily access. And yeah. Two noticed, ports on like the full frame. Yeah. I noticed that too, which was really nice. It was like, you know, you get two CF Express type B slots as well as you still get that USB-C, which is like, I feel like that's like become like a standard black magic thing. Like all black magic shooters have just become equipped to being able to, to just go USB-C out into these T5s, which, as we know, that T5 has become... They've sold so many T5s specifically for that. What are you laughing? Oh, Lord. It, it has begun. <laughs> it has begun. <laughs> Good night. Uh, oh, and wow. also, did you notice the uh, everyone's talking about the battery, which I didn't know much about, but I've gotten like 50 comments. Apparently, these BU, BPU whatever batteries last like three hours. So no, black magic batteries. No. Oh, okay. I, I got, okay. I got a note on that. Hey, Reese, by the way, people are saying that your audio is a little low. So turn that up for us. But I did That's some great. research <laughs> on those batteries. Hold on. It's on here. Uh, I found it. I found it. So the battery that they're showcasing, the, it is. So it is a it is a BPU battery. And there are different versions of that. But what's interesting about what they talk about on here is that they say that it can get up to three hours of recording, but it doesn't tell you exactly which of those batteries it is. And mm. it also is like, doesn't tell you in what codex you get that three hours in. So that's one of those things. Um, yeah, here it is. So it's a 12 volt, uh, it's a 12 volt battery here. And basically it says 
that uh, with the highest capacity BPU battery, you can shoot for over three hours on a single charge. Now, I don't know word like I don't know exactly which battery they tested to get that over three hours, but this is one of those things that when you see this massive camera and then you see that battery pack on the back, I'm just like, yo, step it up, please. Make it easy just to go V mount. Now, I imagine a V mount adapter is coming, which I can see Cam is already Cam and I are on Tilt is probably already, right on, already yeah. working on it. Give me a V mount adapter. It's gonna be but like the issue that I run into is kind of the same one that I ran into with the original Komodo. And that is if you put a V mount too close to the back of the camera, too much of the camera's in, like actual use case is on the back of it. Like, as you can see uh, here, you guys can see my mouse. Like you have your audio inputs here. You have your SDI ports here. Obviously the original batteries here, your memory card adapters are, or your memory card slots are back here. So if you were to put a V mount, attachment on the back you're going to have to leave some space which is like which means ultimately this camera then gets like rigged up longer. probably put on rails and then at that point like why don't you just go with an ursa is kind of my question yeah well i think we'll be interesting to see what sort of battery life we can get out of these out of those batteries i will say uh, at least in terms, I don't know how other cameras react to like when you change codecs or frame rates, how it varies the battery. As someone who's been shooting Blackmagic for years, like I have never experienced any sort of difference in shooting one codec or one frame rate and like having that affect battery life. Uh, even the viewfinder barely seems to pull. I did a whole battery test in the 6K Pro and the viewfinder on that like made almost zero difference fully using it so but i do agree that it will be interesting to to see what it rigs out to and if i mean there's enough of a price difference between this and the the new 12k uh to where it'd have to be a pretty pretty substantial rig before it's like oh let me just buy that 12k <laughs> but yeah and i think i think that's one thing that a lot of people are really liking again like that's i feel like that's going to be the thing like when you see this camera officially get reviewed and people start talking about it, like there's always going to be that caveat of, well, it's only three thousand dollars, though. You know what I mean? So, like, even though, like, I see in the chat, like, people are basically saying, like, like V mount definitely would have been the way to go. Um, you know, so it would have been much better to have a V mount on here. Should have been a V mount. Nathan says should have been a V mount. But like, when we look at it, it's like, yeah, it's three grand. So, like, you know, to add in another. What is it? What would you say a V mount kit would run, Reese? Like another maybe four or five hundred bucks? Yeah, around four or five hundred dollars. Yeah, at that price point, like maybe you get to a place where you're okay. Someone said <laughs> double A double A batteries would have been a better choice. Also, Cam stop hitting on the blind wearing man over here. Look, um, I like this plaid shirt. I I rock with it. <laughs> But no, I honestly, I think that like the truth is, is that, you know, battery has been the thing. Like even with, for me, like if when we look at the Black Magic world, I loved their cameras for a long time. But eventually it was battery that made me start looking elsewhere, which kind of ran me into the to the arms of red, if you will. But like battery was like that first thing for me with the Black Magics where I just felt like I was constantly dealing with it. And so with this camera, I think despite the price, I feel like battery is one of those things that like if this camera nails battery, we're going to see a huge uptick as far as in the quality of like people wanting to adopt this camera and actually use it long term because it just becomes a more simple machine to use overall. I think this could go back to... Uh... I forget the past couple of camera releases. If you wanted it day one, like it was pretty easy to order. I have a feeling this one's going to be like a quick sellout. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. Uh, I mean, based off of the, uh, the poll that we're running. So if you guys don't know, we have a poll going on. And the question is, is this new black magic camera, the king of cinema cameras? And currently it's 52% say yes. And over 120 people have already voted. So that must mean if this is the king, that uh, sixty people have already thrown their wallets at this thing. <laughs> so we know for sure at least sixty people have already decided that they want to pick it up. Um, Brandon, are you going to pick that, one up? 
You know, I the, so this is one of those things for me. I I'm definitely interested in the camera. I don't know if I'm gonna pick it up. I know that Kofi has already said that he's selling his Komodo. It's on Facebook Marketplace. So if you guys are looking for a Komodo X at a good deal, Kofi's selling his. I think for like five or six hundred bucks. Uh, so no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, I think if you you know right now, I feel like a lot of people are going to be trying to pick this camera up fairly quickly because it will probably sell out pretty fast because of the price point alone. I think it's one of those cameras where it's priced at a place where you could just like invest in it and test it out, see if you like it. And then if you don't, you could always return it. But like at $3,000 for as much as this camera gets you, I think it's going to be hard for a lot of people not to like see some type of value out of it. Well, I think you and I Sunday morning are just going to walk over and just touch it and be like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Okay, so here's my question. Uh, if, uh, by the way, Cam, I see you down here. If you want to hop on the stream, let me know, bro. Shoot me a text message right now and I'll get you on here. But um, the question that I had, which is one that's really unique about this camera. So this is one of the few cameras that come out today where you actually get some options in the purchase based off of the actual mount that you want so so many cameras are coming out today and they're trying to lock you into their mount system whether it's rf or it's nikon z or it's sony e-mount and with this one you're getting not only the l mount which is part of the black magic panasonic like L mount l alliance yes I, i'm not i'm not gonna try to be from those photo uh, i can't i can't hit it i have no echo effects up in here um but with this camera you can also buy it in an EF mount, which is 3000 and then the PL mount is a little bit more expensive, $200 more. But it's a it locking out. EF. It's a locking EF. You're right. It's a locking EF. And then you have a locking PL. Watch, I mean, all PL lenses are locking, but you're going to have a locking mount here. And so part of the question for me isn't just do I buy it, but it's if I do buy it, which mount do I go with? Because PL I was initially <laughs> under... Yeah, see, resales PL is really, it's really a no brainer for him. But I, I really want to know, like, one, I wish this camera would just give me interchangeable, like, lens mounts. I feel I, like that's where I, we should, where we should have been. I bet. Do you know for a fact it's not? Because I, if they offer multiple mounts, that looks like four screws in the front to me, where you just that's pop that same, off. Reese, didn't we say that? That's literally the same thing that's what we I was said. Saying but also, I don't, yeah anything on the website that indicates that. i don't and so think that's it is because the new the new cine one has four on the front but they advertise as changeable so i think you have to buy the camera mount that you want my interview with black magic is on sunday so i will ask that perfect all right so you guys know make sure y'all are following tobin because he's going to be interviewing with them uh at nab so you definitely going to want to keep up with him for the nab coverage but yeah that should be a number one question is are these interchangeable because i don't also i also don't see like i mean obviously they have the accessory here the side rosette plate and then they have here so like i don't see the mounts being sold separately anywhere on their website which kind of makes me feel like it's not or at least currently it's not but i would love to see that these be interchangeable because then i would have no problem buying the pl just so i have it off of the jump but then being able to swap over to an EF because personally, I don't have any L mount lenses. I don't plan on buying any L mount lenses. And if I bought the camera as it is right now with the L mount on there, I would just also be buying a EF adapter or a PL adapter. It's true. You guys there? You good? I think your audio kind of cut out there for a second. I'm still there. <laughs> okay, perfect. Tobin looks like he froze up oh. on there you are. Come back. Coming back. I just said I'll place money that uh, that mount is swappable. I mean, just looking at that plate, like if I look at my pocket camera, it's like there's no way that that's coming off that mount. But this one, yeah, literally four screws. They always have a piece of glass covering, protecting the sensors. And their Ursuline is all always swappable. So, yeah, but you're also talking about a camera that again keeps coming back to this it's only three thousand dollars look somebody said uh andrew says might be trading in my pocket 6k g2 
and or my C100 Mark II for this one. Still undecided on letting go of my C100. C100. Wow, C100. That's a workhorse right there. That is a workhorse camera, but you know, this I mean, he's looking at possibly trading in that pocket 6K G2. So that that seems to be a little bit closer I guess to the actual camera that was ported over cuz I don't know if I would compare this to the 6K Pro as much cuz you do yeah. have like built in ND and a couple other extra benefits. But this does feel like a 6K G2, but just in a box body. Sure. And and honestly, for $500 more, or I guess a thousand more than uh, for the regular 6K G2 line, like it's, it's quite the upgrade. So again, like I think they're very smart in the pricing because like you keep coming back to and everyone keeps coming back to like if this was, you know, Forty nine ninety nine. We'd be like, ah, no NDs, thirteen stops, dynamic range. And I earlier in the chat, like right in the beginning, someone said that apparently someone did a dynamic range test on the Komodo, and it's only like usable twelve and a half stops. So apparently, the this original, isn't that far off. The original uh, Komodo. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, the OG, but that the one X is better. Out. The X is better. I will, I will, I will let you know that the X is better, but. When you look at the original Komodo, it was originally designed as a crash cam. So even though a lot of people adopted it as their main A camera, it was never really designed for that. Like unofficially, I believe, like it was just originally designed for uh, Michael Bay to blow up. Uh, Makes so, sense. But yeah, so that was that was really interesting. Now there was a there was a few questions that came through. Because some people were also asking us if some people were saying, you know, I bet it is interchangeable. Someone says if it's not interchangeable, that's a deal breaker for them. Um, so, you know, kind of kind of starts to pop up a little bit. But one of the questions that came through are people are saying 13 stops uh, like it's terrible, LOL. And so, like, my question is, like, obviously, you've shot more with the with the black magics that do have 13 stops. How have you found that that dynamic range? Like, has that worked well for you? Has that been enough? Because I also am underneath the impression that, like, for most things we're doing, if we light it properly, 13 stops could be enough. But yeah. You see, yeah. if you're shooting docks and you're outdoors or you're shooting sports and you can't control things like the sun, that's where you're going to have your issues. Yeah, to me, and I think different cameras, regardless of, of how many stops they have, um, the highlight roll-off is very important. And I mean, Blackmagic, the co B Raw codec is just a beautiful codec. And I mean, it's 12 bit B Raw, like it, it just looks so good. And so I personally, there are not many times where I'm like, oh man, this is clipping, or I'm not able to pull as much data out of this as I want. So there is definitely the mental component of like, oh, it just sounds nice having 14 or 15. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I saw the demo footage for the new 12K, which is 16 stops, um, like that looks really smooth. But like you said, that is pro DPs doing their best. And I'm sure they could have made the Pixies, whatever. And they probably could make my EOS R look that good or something. Like it's, it's all about, you know, how forgiving you want your camera to be, I guess, is when more dynamic range is used. Yeah, that, that definitely can be one of the reasons. And, like, I mean, Reese, you just bought a new Alexa. And uh, <laughs> do you want to tell the people what your uh, what your Alexa specs are? I mean, so I have two of them. I have the older Gen 1. I was actually just looking it up right now. But those have only 14 stops of dynamic range. And it's from 2013 and works perfectly fine for all my needs. As long as you know how to utilize all of it and, you know, you're not blowing out windows or having, you know, too dark of subjects or, like, clothing... It's perfectly fine. But on the other side, once you use a 35, which I think has like 17 or 18 stops of dynamic range, like windows just don't blow out anymore. Also, it's just crazy. It's just you can see everything and you kind of get a little bit lazier with your lighting. You're like, oh, it's all there still. It's fine. It was over those. <laughs> we have it. We can bring it back down. Ari is also the only company, too, that doesn't lie on their <laughs> spec sheet. So it's like <laughs> if they say it's 14 stops, it's pretty much 14 stops. That is true. So I think your mic understand. is still a little low, <laughs> Reese. Your mic is still a little bit low, so you got to bump up that gain. Um, <laughs> but to anybody who is thinking about get, getting one of these, Evan, he knows he knows the he knows the game. He knows this is how I this is how I run it too. So he says he'll be buying the Cine 12K 
as well as a set of tickets to Disney for his family. So really, it's technically a $20,000 camera. And that's if you guys are on this show right now and you have kids and you're trying to figure out how do you justify buying a more expensive camera, Evan knows my game. The way you do it is you rope in the camera with a family win. If you, As long as the family wins when you get the new camera, you'll win with the new camera. So just make sure you budget that accordingly. So that way, you know, if you're looking at this camera and you're like, all right, it's $3,000, but if I take my family away for the weekend, that's going to cost me another $2,000. Really, this is a $5,000 investment for you. And your wife will love you when you come home with this new camera because it's part of the experience. Just make sure you sell it that way. Um, you know, just some, just some advice for you, some of you guys, because I know some of you right now, 53% of you, in fact, are thinking that this is the new king of cinema cameras. And so you need some advice on how to buy this camera. So I just wanted to help you out. That's the most important advice in camera purchasing I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, look, I'm just trying to help the people out. That's that's literally <laughs> what it's all about here. Someone says, Sage advice. Look, that's what we're trying to do here. That's what we're trying so, to do. Just trying to help the people, you know. It's not it's not a trick, Ramon. It's take <laughs> care of your family. Let's make sure we get it right. <laughs> Someone asked about low light. It, it's probably gonna do the same low light as the as the 6K full frame, which black magic's in low light, like they're fine. They're they've come a long way. But it's not like Sony or anything, but now we'll look I, good. yeah, I think you know, and I think that's one of the unique elements of this camera is just like how one because of the price, I think a lot of people are gonna look at it and try their best to figure out how they can put it into their workflow. Because at that price point, you're just you're getting so much more than what you normally would expect to get out of a camera, which is something that Black Magic has kind of always done. It's always been one of those those companies where you're not asking yourself like is this camera worth the price? 9 times out of 10 you're asking yourself like am I willing to n deal with not having this because the price is so well like the price is so good that I I, I that it's like eh, I'm willing to deal with it just because the price is so good, which is very different than the way we normally look at other cameras. Like last week, we were even talking about the Burano with uh, Rob Machado. And the question was like, is this camera worth the $25,000 price tag? You know, I don't think anybody's going to ask themselves about this camera. Is it worth 6,000? I think everyone unanimously will be like, yeah, it's absolutely, I'm sorry, 3,000. 3, is, is it worth $3,000? I think everyone will be like unanimously, yeah, it's worth $3,000. But the question becomes, you know, of what I think is missing, am I willing to deal with those things? Now, we've been trying to get Kofi on the stream here for a minute, but he's been having some, like, like internet issues. So, Kofi, if you're good to hop on, let me know. I definitely would love to get you on here because everybody saw your video talking about you selling your Komodo to be able to, you know, buy this camera. So, I think he I said he's just going to give it to me and then, like, I'll take it. Oh, hands. that was happening. You're yeah, gonna take. So. You're gonna take. So he's bringing his Komodo to you at NAB. That's right. And um, in, unless he gets on here in the next thirty seconds and says otherwise, that's the deal. <laughs> all right. Well, Kofi, I don't see you yet. So everybody needs to know. Oh, look, he's trying to come on. He's trying. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on? Uh, you guys are gonna get this from Armando's cyber truck because we are getting lunch right now. So we are chilling here. Armando's in the front seat, and Terry's like back here. Hey. Hey, just, hey, like, put him on. Put him. <laughs> what up? Hey, what's Look, up, guys? This is YouTube life. This is what we do. <laughs> this is this how we do it. No, we were just you, up. In you the asked for one service, YouTuber, so you got three. Uh, <laughs> so, some of y'all have questions for that video. Um, I'll let you ask the questions, and I'll give you the answers. Look, let's just be real with it. Let's start. How low are you selling your Komodo X for? That's all people really care about because they want to buy it off. Um, what I think it ends up being like eighty five hundred US or something like that, or eighty or eight thousand US, or something like that. I don't know how to do the exchange, honestly. But here's the thing: with that video, it's kind of a twofold because I was already I already posted it beforehand, and the reason why was I was doing an evaluation of the sets that I'm on that already provide the camera, which it ended up being kind of like the one studio shoot we just did. We shot on a Raptor and a Komodo X, and that belonged to the studio. The last film that we did, the last short film we did, we had four Komodo X's and a Raptor. Everything else we shot, Venice or Burano. 
every time I'm like, oh, I want to bring my Komodo X to the shoot, I, there's another camera already there. So I'm like, well, why do I have this thing? So I posted it, whatever. I'm still operating on Komodo systems or Red Systems in general. I just don't have to own one. So I'd rather just keep myself the money. Then we watched the Black Magic announcement. And when they told me the price, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm buying it. I'm, that's an instant cop. That makes it has no business being as cheap as it is and giving you what it is. So two things are true at the same time. Um, but also at the same time, like we're all on YouTube and we understand that like your access to things are a little bit easier. So the decision on what you keep and what you operate on or what you rent changes with that kind of frequency. So, Hey, look, I just want you to know that Cam says that you're a trader. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> all Cam, that... I know where you live now. Well, let's go. Look, all I'll, that... I'll see you tomorrow. He said all that yip yapping and jaw jacking don't mean nothing. You a trader. You guys can do a proper shootout. That seems like a <laughs> yeah, sound. Jeez. There you go. There's an Instagram story <laughs> on me using a rifle back out for the first the time. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was all pretty right. much it. Like my personal life in terms of creator, like be like doing all of this stuff has changed, and that dictates. Remember, you got to get back to this. Yeah, yeah. and that dictates the stuff that you buy. Yeah, you're actually, you guys got to come and get tacos with us. Shit. <laughs> This man I'm not is, playing around. Okay. Dude. That's what we're doing. Hey, look, this is the reason why Kofi is late because he's he's out there rolling around in his cyber truck with Armando and Terry getting tacos when we're trying to be live and help you guys out. No, just don't uh, put your finger in the doorknob. Yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> but real talk, I I think it's very interesting, and I I don't think that. Kofi's too far off from a lot of people, especially, and this is the same thing we saw with the original Black Magic, was that eventually you get to a place where, especially when Black Magic does stuff with the pocket, where you're just looking at it and you're thinking, like, there's so much value in this camera that it makes you reassess the entire landscape. Kofi, while you're grabbing lunch, I'm going to pull you off. <laughs> like, I feel like there's so much value in this camera specifically that it does naturally make everyone just reassess the industry as a whole, which will make people look at selling their black magic, their existing black magics or selling their reds or their Sony's or whatever, which personally, like as someone who shoots kind of camera agnostic, like, yeah, I get it. I say I shoot a lot of stuff on red, but I do actually have to shoot on a lot of different cameras. Like you get to a place where there are so many great cameras, and when something like this comes out of basically feeling like left field and just smacks the industry, I like that move because it forces the rest of the industry to like really see what they got. You know what I mean? We can really see like where the value sits for a lot of these cameras. And one of the questions, like I know this is like a standard, but it's very interesting. B Ford he uh, came in with the super chat and he says, "Will it be a Netflix approved camera?" What's wild is that how inexpensive a lot of Netflix approved cameras have been, but Netflix approved isn't, I don't really look at it as like, like the standard to me personally, but what it does show you is just like how valuable cameras have gotten and how much better the technology has gotten for a much cheaper price. Because even though, yeah, this camera sounds absolutely nuts, especially at this price point, like if you look at pretty much any camera in the landscape that has been out like in the last, I would say, I don't know, maybe two or three years, it feels like every camera is just massively better than what we would have had before then and at a much cheaper price point. Truth. And even I think what uh, someone asked Kofi a question, but I think he touched upon the owner versus or owner operator versus like renting is so, uh, just Travis asked uh, thoughts okay. on high frame rate options or lack thereof. And it's like, I think at the price point, like what you're talking about, it's a great camera to own. That's going to get you there on most projects. And then, oh, we're on a project where we need, you know, 300 FPS or higher, or a little bit lower, then it's like you just rent for that project because your owned camera is such a good value. But yeah, obviously, I, I would like I'll, to have higher frame rates. <laughs> I would like it to have those higher frame rates too. But yeah, let's bring up Kofi. Let's see what he says. Kofi, oh, oh, there you go. Yeah, no, this, you got me? Okay, cool. My thing with like high frame rates is exactly what you guys said. Like if I need like... In terms of a camera to keep in my house, those are going to be different than what you're going to rent from. And I find a lot of people that are even Black Magic Pixis or like any of those sub ten thousand dollar camera owners, 
chances are the budgets you're working on on those projects weren't those cameras. And anything bigger than that, just go to the rental house. You don't have the responsibility of having to pay off that camera and go and rent it. Like, we rent the Raptor all the time whenever we need things with, like, a faster readout or the Komodo X if you want global shutter. If you're somebody that's doing, like, talking head real estate interviews or whatever, you probably don't need some of those things where it's easier for you to just grab the camera that you need and go. And then if you... If you're in the situation where, yeah, I really need a Komodo X, then you probably have the budget that you could rent it for the day, more than likely. And for the frame rates, I don't know many people, like, I don't know, at least for me personally, at 60 frames, anything more than that, I kind of don't need it for the most things, where if I do need it, then you, you have a camera for that. If you're someone that shoots at 120 frames a second, then you kind of already know. One sec. <laughs> if you're somebody that needs 120 frames a second, you know what camera that's already out there. So expecting this Black Magic release to be the FX3, I don't necessarily think is very fair because you, that camera already exists. Yeah, I will say that, like at least in my experience, when it comes to like higher frame rate stuff, um, at least like what is what I've found is that most of the time they know that going into the project. Like I just did a shoot a couple uh, like. Maybe it was a week ago. Maybe it was a little over a week ago. And we were shooting professional skateboarders at NASA. And they were trying to show, like, the like talking about gravity and stuff like that. I don't know, science stuff. <laughs> and they knew they wanted to shoot it in slow motion. And so we decided to use my Raptor because we wanted, you know, full frame. And they didn't want to rent out, like, a, a phantom camera or whatever. So the Raptor was going to be able to get the job done. But we knew that going into the project, it wasn't like a surprise, like on set, like, oh, by the way, how slow can we, you know, or how fast can we crank this, you know, our frame rate on this camera? So it was all very well planned out. And so I think the same thing is true to what Kofi is saying, is that by knowing what the job is going to be before you show up on the day, if you do need higher frame rates, then yeah, rent that camera that you need for that or, or you know, force a phone off to bring that out for you. Um, but if you don't if you like if you don't need that on a regular basis then buying a camera like this is going to be just more affordable and then you can actually take the remaining money especially if things are tight because we get it filmmaking is expensive then you can invest in other elements like lighting or accessories or you know sliders gimbals whatever else you might need to enhance your video so I think that's I think I think unanimously I think we're all kind of on the same page. Also, I want to kind of keep in mind too with some of these new releases. Like every time a camera releases, it doesn't mean that it's made specifically for your use case to weigh it against what the camera is for. Don't take camera releases personally because different brands are going to be good at different things. So comparing everything that's ever come out ever to what I use, and then whether or not it qualifies for that use case or otherwise gets deemed as being trash. I think that's kind of short-sighted, right? Like, it's for the Burano just came out, right? The Burano is going to be for a very particular type of person that's going to value what it is and therefore be worth it for them to buy. If I'm a Sony FX3 user, yes, there's, you could compare them all you want, but it's also not for you and you shouldn't take it personally either, right? And I think no, that I sometimes think gets lost in the weeds. No, no, no. Anybody who releases a camera that comes close to one of my reds, I take it personally and it's fighting time. <laughs> 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 yeah, like I don't know. I, I think because and there's so many cameras that are out now where like if you if you don't like novel idea, maybe the camera's not for you and then you could just stay with what you got or just wait to the new one of what you have. No, I just messed with you. I totally and, agree. And that's where uh people someone commented, How's the autofocus? It's like if you want autofocus, you already know black magic is not for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, if you want autofocus, this is not your uh this is not your this is not your sandbox. If if I if I was questioning whether a box camera was ever gonna exist, if I if you asked me do I think Black Magic is getting autofocus, that's like that's like a far fetched dream there. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out really quick for the super sticker because I honestly don't see you very often. But thank you so much, uh, Director Rose, for that because that's uh, that's sick. I didn't even know you could do super stickers. I thought it was just super chat. So, loving it. Uh, we do have another super chat question coming in here. Do y'all think there will, be, there will eventually be a version of the global shutter or interchangeable lens mount? Um, or... Or will it be a, as expensive as the Ursa? Look, I think this camera, I'll go first on this, is about as close, like, I feel like it's getting very close to Ursa already. 
I mean, now I don't have as much experience with the Ursa outside of like using it at churches as a broadcast camera. Um, but like this camera feels very, very close to the Ursa. And I feel like if they add too, too much to it, it starts to really start to step on the Ursa. And the only way I see this working is kind of what they've already alluded to is pushing the Ursa into like these like crazy cameras with 17K and crazy stops of dynamic range and sort of push the Ursa further. And then this camera starts to take the current Ursa's place. And then I think we'll see things like ND. I don't know if we're going to see global shutter. That hasn't seemed to be something that Black Magic has really cared about for a while, but maybe. Uh, and yeah, then the, the end of the mount, I'm hoping that's just a matter of time. Like we just find out in a fo- in like in a few months or maybe even a year that like now they're selling the the lens mount separately, so you can upgrade your camera if you want to. Like maybe they just didn't do that out the gate because of just supply. But those four screws are there, so it feels like it should be pretty easy. I think it's something that they'll they'll add and and build their accessory because we saw with the 12K they really went pretty hard on the the first party accessories and I think we'll see it with this just like you said and uh, unlike Red as much as I enjoy Red um, anytime I go to the Red website and even if you can swallow whatever the base price for the body is then you start adding the accessories and it hurts every time you add something. But like I went to the Pixis, I think to add the side plate was like 49 or 50 bucks. I was like, oh, that's so nice. A first party accessory for under a hundred dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You, you shouldn't talk about red and accessories than anybody else. That's just not, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the same game. Yeah. It's just not the same game. Not but, the same game. Uh, uh all right. So here is the quick. We are almost at exactly 200 votes on the poll and we're currently sitting at is this the new king of the cinema camera game 55 percent say yes 45 percent say no so as i'm actually surprised it was this close i would love to know in the chat before we get ready to wrap this up what for you is the feature in a cinema camera and tobin i'll let you go and then reese i'll let you go but like And chat, let me know, what is the feature for you that if a camera just murders this feature, it makes it, like, the best cinema camera you've ever seen? So, like, what is is the feature? And it may be, like, I'll give you, like, two or three features. Like, if a camera can just kill these two or three features, it makes it, like, the most amazing camera you've ever used. All right, Tobin, I'll let you go first. Mm. Uh, For me, I think it goes back to dynamic range and not necessarily the number but like the highlight roll off how well it handles noise and shadows like the image quality because you owned the original pocket camera the tiny little dinky that thing only shot 1080p and when people uploaded it that footage you still look better than any 4k dslr at the time and so i got to go with the ultimate image quality um and then yeah one other feature I really, I really do like internal NDs. I've been spoiled by the 6K Pro, so I, I guess I'll go with that. I can deal with crappy battery life. I'll have 20 batteries. I don't care. <laughs> well, I, I like Cam's answer. Uh, he says that it needs a map box and for slow motion coffee B-roll. So The Peter we, McKinnon starter kit. Hey, I didn't say that name. You said that name. <laughs> So when they got uh, when the YouTube when the YouTube filmmaking gods come after you, it's it's all on you. And I think other people are agreeing with you. Uh, I don't know if that's Philip. Philip says dynamic range and resolution. So I think they're uh, they're they're right on key with you. How about you, Reese? When it comes to cinema cameras, what are like the one or two features for you that is like everything? I'd say color silence science because like I used to previously own a Komodo, love that, used it for everything for like three years straight, but then bought a camera that was ten years older than it just so I can get the color science out of it. Camera has terrible battery life, goes through the 150 watt in like two hours. It doesn't have a high ISO base at all. Like I think the maximum ISO on it is like 3,200. 3, so those don't matter to me, but like color science, that is all I could ever lack. So I can take it to my colors, he can make it look exactly how I want. And it could be a 10 AP file, but if it looks like it's 6K or if it has the color and look that I'm going for and the texture, that's all I could ask for. Bit depth is vastly underrated too. Yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, I I think that's that's it for me. Like my number one has definitely, and it's because of what I shoot with a lot. So this this caters it a bit, but shooting with Red Raw, which you know now with the Nikon acquisition, maybe we'll get Red Raw in one of these smaller Z bodies. I'd love to see that, but um, that 16 bit Raw that you get out of the red, like for me having that much bit information and as as red would say it as many crayons in the box you really can push and pull your image and get it to a place that you're really happy with and i'm not saying someone says the yellow komodo i love it um <laughs> i'm not saying that the camera itself has to be red specifically but i have come to really love just having that extra bit depth and having uh, that raw flexibility flow. Now, one thing that Red gives me that I actually don't care about a lot is like high resolution. I'm one of those people who really thinks that like four or 6K is more than enough. I really don't need 8K. 17K on this new Black Magic sounds ludicrous, if you ask me. Um, so like the fact that that's a thing, <laughs> it's not mine. I'm like, I don't know how much more punching in you want to do, but I guess go for it. Get the widest things you can. Well, and people forget that system. <laughs> you're right. But it also like most lenses are max rated for like 8K. And even on the 12K, I started to see like some like, oh, you can't even get the sharpness of the sensor because even the center of this lens, you have to be at like F11 or T11 or something to see it. So between screens, lenses, like there's there's a lot of bottlenecking. But hey, I, I appreciate the innovation. So yeah, I, I I just love when stuff like this happens just because I like there's like little things that we've all seen that happen in the industry that shake it up. Obviously, black magic seems to always do it like every like three or so years where like they'll drop something at a crazy price that makes everybody reassess what they're doing. Like I, I can take it on good authority that like the original pocket camera is like one of the reasons why we started seeing FX threes and FX thirties, because it showed that there was a cinema audience at that price point. And then Sony felt like they needed to come out with cameras at that price point. Like it definitely shook up the, the landscape. You know what I mean? And then the same thing happened when red came out with the Komodo, giving us a cinema camera in that box format, sub $10,000 and like now we're starting to see even black magic and we saw z cam and kin kin of what is this the other one kin, kin affinity kin affinity kin is that what's called yeah. yeah like like now we're getting all these box cameras and so i i think it's going to be very interesting to see how this continues to shake up and how we keep getting better and better cameras out of it um but last thoughts before we bounce out of here um, what are you guys most excited about seeing at NAB? And I'll throw this over to the chat as well. Chat, let us know what is it that you want. Reese just dipped out. Uh, <laughs> He's like nothing. I want to see. Anything. I don't want to answer this question. No. So, uh, chat, let us know what is it that you want to see covered at NAB? Because we'll all be there. Um, and so I'd love to know from you guys what you want to see us cover at NAB. What do you want videos on? What do you want stories on? Because make sure you're following us for all of that. But Tobin, what are you most excited outside of Black Magic? I'm going to take Black Magic off the sure. list because I already know you're going to be at that booth for like half the day on Sunday. So, um, but let me know aside from Black Magic, what is one thing that you're most excited about checking out at NAB? Uh, I got to go to, I'm going to run over to the Tilta booth and their new Chrono system for iPhone 15 pro looks pretty sweet. Whole yeah. new iPhone rig. I seen you, you've been going ham on the iPhone stuff lately, dude. It's it, I, in years past, it was always just fun videos, but it's like, I'm never really going to use these. I've integrated the iPhone into every single project I've worked on since it come out. I can match it to any camera. It's, it's insane. Well, I think for me, I'm going to have to go. And Nathan, I think we're on the same same boat here. But those inflatable those aperture cool, lights, man. look, those panels look amazing. And the idea that you can get an 8 by is absolutely nuts. I love shooting through 8 bys and 12 bys, And so I'm really excited to see how these things actually work. The other thing I just, I got to get an idea on is the price. Like, I haven't seen exactly what the price of these things are going to be. Um like how much it's going to take to actually like put it all together and all the different accessories that are needed for it.
but I'm definitely, definitely down to see those. Uh, and I want to go check out what all they have going on, but there's so much going on at NAB. Like I was just like, we were just on BNH's website right before we, uh, right before we hopped on here and BNH, if you guys don't know, they've already started posting some of the NAB stuff that's getting announced and it's, it's nuts. That's so wild. Wild. It's you nuts. and I were talking this afternoon. It's like, we're already exhausted and we haven't even gotten there yet. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, we just just a quick rundown. Oh, it looks like a Oh my god! Here. But yeah, like this is just kind of what's already being announced for for uh, for NAB, but the new REL series lights. Obviously, all the stuff Black Magic did today. Uh, Sennheiser's got new microphones. Atomos came out with the new iPhone monitoring and recording. Like that's that's nuts. I'm really excited about checking that out. Uh, obviously, DZO just announced some new anamorphic pavo lenses so i'm all about lenses right now and i've been in the market for some good cinema um anamorphic lenses and then just so much more light panels i mean everywhere it's, atlas got some new stuff coming out so if you guys are gonna be at nab hit us up cam mackie's with me he says he's looking for a new 2x anamorphics um really really excited to be at nab can't wait to to meet up with you guys reese i'll let you quickly answer what is the one thing you're looking for the most? Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the DJI booth, actually. I really want to test out the fall focus because I I do a lot of focus pulling when I'm not DPing. And, you know, I love autofocus, as everyone else does. But I love integrating it with my workflow as a focus puller. So to integrate that with ecosystem DJI transmission that I already have, mm -hmm. I actually want to see how good the hand unit pairs with the motors and that whole ecosystem. So... That's something I'm really excited for. And I also did get to work on the commercial for the Aperture, uh, what's it called, Infinity Mats. I worked on that also. So they are very interesting and actually very cool. Oh, I didn't know you guys had to shoot that. That's dope. Yeah, well, that and the Citus one. <laughs> well, we're going to have to have a conversation about that offline. But um, I just want to quickly go through and see what you guys had to say. Someone said, uh, let's see, what did you guys, what are you guys most excited about looking at? Someone says, I wish it could go to NAB. Dude, I wish you were there. Uh, very interested in that DJI Focus Pro. I am too. I know Cam Sweet. Mackey, he just dropped an amazing video on a lot of these Killer. DJI accessories. Absolutely crushed it. Um, so we got a lot of awesome stuff coming through. Someone says, Codex Super 8 camera. Ironically, that's been on my radar for like so many years. I never thought it would actually come out, but uh, it looks like they actually did drop it. So yeah. Uh, and then someone says, NAB is free, just got to pay to get there. And that's true. It is free to get in. If you don't know how to get into NAB for free, you can literally just go online, type it like Google, free NAB access code. Uh, also, Aperture, Condor Blue, and a bunch of other companies, they send out emails that have codes on them too, so you can use any of those to get in. So if you are close to the Vegas area and you want to stop at NAB and come and hang out, definitely do it. If you see me at NAB... Uh, Hit me up because I have, we just came out with these. These are our CFA flannels. So it's just being a part of the creative fam. If you don't know what the creative fam is, that's just anybody who enjoys this content. If you like hanging out on the live streams that we do every Friday, or if you like just watching the videos, uh, we're going to have some free flannels and also some free hats. So Ooh. if you want some free Ooh. merch, come find me on the floor. Uh, I believe we're going to have a lot. We're going to have a few things on Sunday and we'll have more on Monday. But yeah, come hit us up. Find me on the floor. We'll hook you up with some free stuff until it's gone. That's literally how it <laughs> rolls. But Reese, I appreciate <laughs> I your time. <laughs> Tobin, I appreciate your time. You guys hopping on live. I uh, appreciate you guys talking with me about this thing. I knew I wasn't going to be able to make a video like you guys because I don't have as much spare time as you. But <laughs> going live was a blast. So everyone who was here on the live stream, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have any additional questions, leave those in the comments. We'll leave this video up on the channel. So that way, if you came in late, you can kind of double back around and watch the beginning again. But appreciate everybody for uh, hanging out with us. Uh, any last words from the guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no yeah. worries. Excited to see everyone at AB. Safe yeah. travels, everybody. All right. Later, guys. Peace. Later. See you. I don't know how to end this stream. <laughs>